to review the light. Today we're taking a look at the new ST30 by Chloris. But really quick, before we get into it, if you haven't yet, go ahead and click this link right down here to subscribe to me on YouTube. This one right up here to follow me on Facebook. That'll make sure you keep up to date with the latest reviews and videos. So the ST30 by Chloris uh, is a... Um, longer light. You can see it takes uh, two 18650 batteries and it's got a kind of a medium size head. We'll take a closer look at that in a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you each side of the box. If you want to look at any side longer, feel free to pause the video and you can read the specifications back there or anything that you want. I won't go into them in detail to save time. Um, so we'll go ahead and open it up and take a look. All right, inside the box we have this little uh, flyer advertisement for some other Chloris lights. We've got some accessories in this bag, a little lanyard and a spare O-ring. We've got the user manual. I'll open that up and show it to you for a second. And if uh, again, if you want to take a look at anything closer, you can feel free to pause the video. That'll show up if we'll focus there. There you go. And finally, the light itself. And again, if there's any more details, feel free to uh, pause the video to check out any of the details or follow the link that I'll put in the description once the full review is finished and you can check out the full review. Um, so, this is the ST30. Uh, we'll take a look at the emitter here. This is a Cree XML U2 emitter. So, it's a good high efficiency, high brightness emitter. And you look down inside there, you can see it's got a smooth reflector and uh, fairly deep. So even though the head isn't really large, it's still going to do some decent throw by setting the, the emitter far back into the head there. You can see we have some heat dissipation fins around where the uh, electronics are in the emitter. Uh, that helps move heat out away from the electronics in the emitter, in the emitter into the air. Uh, that'll preserve the life of your flashlight. And you can see this orange button controls the whole light here. The body is pretty simple, um, smooth design. The tail cap here is flat with just a, just a little hole there for you to attach the lanyard. We'll go ahead and open it up. And there you can take a look inside the tail. You can see that spring there and the threads. The threads aren't anodized, but they are square cut and they're pretty thick, so they should last for quite a while. And I'll show you the threads here between the body and the head as well. They're the same deal. On uh, inside the head, you can see the spring on that side to make connection with the battery. Having the springs on both sides is a good touch. Uh, you don't need button top batteries. You can have flat top batteries so that it'll still work in here. Um, and I've got a couple of those to demonstrate. And uh, also having the springs on both sides helps prevent damage to your batteries or to your flashlight if you drop the light and there's an impact. All right, so I've got two 18650 batteries in there. It can also run off of four CR123 primary batteries, um, but I like the rechargeables. So we've got those in there, and we'll go ahead and use the button to fire it up and give it a shot. Um, you to turn it on, you just do a single click, and you're not going to be able to see the beam pattern really well in the box, but I'll just demonstrate the user interface. You'll see the beam better when we take it outside. Um, so it comes on in whatever mode you use last when you do a single click. To turn it back off, you hold down on the button for about a second, and it turns off. Uh, I'll turn it back on again with a click and then to rotate through the modes you just do a single click it's got three modes it rotates through high medium and low and again whichever one you leave that in when you turn it off say I leave it in low in the low I turn it back on and it comes back on in the low if I leave it in the high then when I turn it off again it'll come back on in the high and uh, same for the medium, it just remembers whatever mode you use last. Um, to access the flashing modes, you do a double click, and first you go into a strobe. It's kind of a variable speed strobe. And then another double click will take you into the SOS mode. And then to get out of those modes, you just do a single click and it goes back to whatever mode you were using last. And also, um, the strobe can also be ac accessed when the light is off. Even if the light's off, you do a double click and it takes you right to the strobe mode. And then another double click again, the SOS mode like that. And if you go from off, then when you turn off the strobe mode, it'll turn the, light, the flashlight back off. Um, so that is the interface of the Chloris ST30. And if you stick around for just a second, we will take it outside and give it a shot in the dark. All right, welcome back to Review the Light. We've got the Chloris ST30-U here in the backyard. We're gonna go ahead and fire it up. So here it is. It looks like we're in one of the lower modes now. I'll cycle through to see where we're at. There's the brighter. So we've got the 
the high, medium, and low available. So you can see the low isn't extremely low. This is plenty of light for walking around. Um, obviously you can see that, well I guess we'll We'll bump back up to the high mode. So you can see a fairly narrow beam overall. Even the flood pattern is fairly narrow, or the spill region. Um, so it only goes, you know, about to out to here. Um, so it's a pretty narrow beam pattern overall. Uh, not a lot of flood. Definitely mostly focused on throw with this light. Even though the the head is extremely large, it's um, definitely a definitely focused on throw for here for this light. Um, so the hot spot, you can tell. Um, pretty bright right in there and then it drops off quickly into the spill region. The whole spill region is pretty uniform in brightness um, just by looking at it. So I'll pan around a little bit here so you can see as so I look up into the trees. So you can see pretty well up there. The tent that you're seeing is pretty accurate to what I see. Um, on the, A bit on the cooler side but the hot spot is noticeably warmer than the spill region. All right, and here's a lower, mo or yeah, here's a low mode, um, and even on the low mode, like I was saying, plenty of light to see everything by anything in the the spill region up close to me. I can see um, in in plenty of detail uh, as things get farther out than the spot. Um, will obviously still project really far, even in the slowest mode, and then the medium mode obviously is in between the two. So um, if I were just walking around with this light, I would have it in the low mode usually and then have the medium and the high available if I needed to see something farther away. Um, so I will also show you the strobe mode. Here we go. Here's the variable speed strobe. Here we've got the SOS mode. And then I think that's it for the, the flashy modes there, if I remember right. So that is the Chloris ST30-U. Thanks for joining us on the Review the Light. If you haven't yet, remember to click right up here to follow me on Facebook, right down here to subscribe to my YouTube channel. That'll keep you up to date with the latest reviews and videos. This has been the Chloris ST30-U on Review the Light. Thanks and have a great night.